Hello everyone, and welcome back to Tech Espresso, where we serve quick, insightful, and engaging tech lessons. I'm your host, Vir Verma, and today I'm proud to be speaking with Dr. Raghavendra Huneski, the Chief Marketing Officer and Co-Founder at Zebu, a blockchain-powered telecom settlement platform that recently reached a unicorn status. Dr. Huneski is not only a marketing branding expert, but also a serial entrepreneur, investor, best-selling author, and a global thought leader. He's advised world leaders, serves on multiple corporate brands, and helps skill companies that are transforming industries from the ground up. Today, we'll be diving into what it takes to scale a startup into a unicorn, how Zebu is using blockchain to solve real-world business problems, and the key lesson and advice Dr. Hineski has for young, aspiring tech entrepreneurs. Let's get right to it. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Tech Espresso. I'm super excited to be here today with Dr. Hineski. And uh, to start off the first question, you've helped build and scale multiple ventures. What do you think are the most important principles for turning a startup into a high-growth, scalable company? And what key decisions or mindsets made the biggest difference in your own journey? Beautiful. So first of all, thank you so much for having me on Tech Espresso. I've been following all your episodes. You, you are a rock star. You're doing phenomenal work there. So, so good work. Keep it up. Um, and happy to be on your show. Um, so brilliant question. I think brilliant start of our conversation. I think uh, uh, every company, every entrepreneur who starts uh, starts with an aspiration to build a unicorn, and and I think we were no different. We built uh, something with a similar ideology, um, and uh, and and we started the journey. But uh, in no time, I think we ended up becoming a unicorn. So th there are a few things that every entrepreneur should know. Um, number one is um, you know having the product early in the market is the is the key right i mean i have seen most of the entrepreneurs fail where they take almost forever to design the product right they want to perfect they they, they want to perfect the product before it goes out and that kills a lot of time um what i suggest to most of the entrepreneurs today is um, you know take take the product build probably four or five most important and critical features um which is called mvp the minimum viable product and then release it in the market. And once you have customers testing it, using it and giving you feedback, then you improvise on it. So this will help people to, you know, go to market, uh, you know, much faster, much quicker and realize some revenues. One of the key things that, um, you know, entrepreneurs today ignore is the importance of having, you know, real paying customers. Um, I mean, if I, I mean, right now we also invest and, you know, I invest from my family office. We we run a small fund and when we go out to invest in in startups the first thing we look at it is it pre-revenue or revenue stage and any startup that is generating revenue is is probably the darling for any investor so that's the first and the most important thing um the next is you know what kind of team uh, you know you have on board right you need committed set of spartans who are building this you know it, it cannot be your startup cannot be a part-time me to gig um so, so it has to have a serious committed individuals with, with good pedigree that will build a phenomenal product. The third and the most important thing is what space are they going after and what problem are they solving? If you are solving a problem that will not continue to exist five years from now, then you should not be building your startup. So, so these are some of the areas that we look at that we evaluate when we you know, write a check or when we decide to partner with any startups or any entrepreneurs. Wow. Um... Yeah, that really resonates with me. And just to like bring kind of another perspective, I feel like uh, the idea of growth, like it just isn't about like throwing money or like people like at a problem. It's about like uh, intentionality. Today, like a lot of young founders, especially in tech, get caught up in building uh, like really fast. Like they want no patience. They want to like immediately get like success. But like sometimes they don't really understand why they're actually building it or who they're really like trying to do it for. And I think hearing uh, that discipline mindset and like long-term focus is what like plays a role in a, a journey that can like help reframe people like to think about growth. It's just like about the process uh, grounded in vision and execution. So yeah, so it's like about like just like having a clear goal in mind and just staying towards it. And uh, this will help leading to my, this will help lead well into my next question, which is about uh, Zebu. Uh, you're the co-founder of Zebu, and Zebu is built on cutting-edge technology, including blockchain, a space where few mainstream companies have succeeded. So how did you and your team first approach innovation when developing something this complex? And more importantly, how does blockchain actually transform the business processes you're targeting? Beautiful question. So when I co-founded Zebu um, with my other two co-founders, the original idea was to just build a PSP 
a payment uh, solution provider that will help you know multiple businesses uh, transact uh, you know cross border that was the only goal we started the the goal was never to be in blockchain the goal was never to have our own token or not to have any crypto so so what we did is we started building the psp the payments platform and we started uh, helping customers between different countries to settle um but after 6 months into the process we realized we need speed we need agility and we need a you know very trustless ecosystem how can we um, how can we build something that can happen much faster quicker and doesn't have to you know and, and can solve all the banking bottlenecks and can also happen much faster and can scale across multiple countries um and hence for all of this we had to rely on blockchain technology and uh, that's how we slowly pivoted from being a psp to being a psp on blockchain and um, and you won't believe the scale was phenomenal from the time we embarked on using blockchain technology i think we started with uh, 100000 dollars in transaction in the first month uh, going to 1.6 billion in 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 a year so and this was only possible because we were using blockchain we were using crypto and and hence you know it kind of gave us that extra additional boost to grow and today when you look back in 3 years we have processed about 9.3 billion dollars on the chain um and uh, and we and i feel we're just getting started so so yeah the journey had wouldn't have been so phenomenal if we had not used blockchain as a technology today we process invoices across 60 odd countries 140 plus customers on the platform and and i mean probably we are the only or one of those few businesses who has put customers on wait list we have about 109 customers who are in the wait list who want to use the platform and we are telling them slow down we you know we we are not open to take so much business right now um i think we got this edge because of that and and probably it would not have been a unicorn if if not for blockchain wow um that's actually really wonderful and really inspiring like it's crazy to think how like how blockchain came in and just basically changed everything and it makes it seem as if like blockchain like i mean it is but like it makes it makes blockchain feel a lot more real and applicable and right like I think like a lot of people today my age are curious about blockchain but there's like this barrier like uh where block where it makes it feel as a blockchain is too abstract and um hearing how Zebu is using to like solve a concrete like large scale industry problems shows like how the tech isn't just like theoretical it's already there and it's in for infrastructure and it also shifts the conversation from like crypto to trust um transparency and like efficiency which I think is the future of this enterprise tech and um this leads to my next question so every every entrepreneur aspires to reach at the level you're at but challenges perseverance and learning from failure are where many people fall short so most of my audiences are young uh, students interested in technology what is your advice to them given the dynamic nature of this industry um see i i think be it blockchain be it crypto be it ai be it any industry right i think um, what it takes to win what it takes to scale and grow is 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 a lion heart entrepreneur right and um, it would be wrong if it would be wrong for anybody to say you know uh, you know we have failed or we have tried or made multiple attempts right nothing happens overnight um uh, when i did my first startup for me to raise my first check from the investor to get the first check i think we knocked on about 130 doors we reached out 130 investors i think after 2030 my co-founders my team almost everybody said that maybe we will not be able to raise money because they said if there are so many rejections you know then we probably will not uh, be able to make it uh, i think that perseverance is very very important if you if you believe whatever you are building is of value and if you believe that it is going to change the world in a better way you know just keep at it i think i think you will you will be able to grow scale the second thing that i have seen is um, you know lot of people want shortcuts lot of people want to succeed uh, you know overnight lot of people don't want to take the harder route the road less travel i think that kind of uh, leads to you know failure or dissatisfaction try to always you know there is a saying right they say eat the frog first so try to do the toughest thing first and that will make your life a lot more easier um third and most important thing is the kind of people you hang out with you network with the schools you go the places you study uh, all of this matters because you are i mean this is a very cliche thing now but your your network is your net worth so the people you hang out with the investors uh, you know the co-founders the teams will what will decide you know the future course of where you will land 
uh, i think these are few things um, you know very very old school very very um, you know um, beaten to death uh, principles but this is what uh, always has worked i mean this is zibu is my third venture and uh, by first two startups were also a very beautiful exits and i think we were able to do it only because we 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 believe uh, i personally believe that you stick to these principles and you will succeed yeah um yeah i feel like i can completely relate to that a little bit uh i i like how you emphasize like um learning patience and resilience like i think like a lot of uh, students like when like myself included as well like tend to over focus on like speed or like um visibility early on we want the success immediately but forget that like setbacks and like failure is part of the success and part of the process but uh like what you said like just like i guess like staying grounded and like learning from like every stage just like um not giving up of the journey is like it's like something that more people in tech need to like hear and like not just in tech but like in any in any other industry especially when there's so much pressure to like succeed early onwards and like just to succeed from like the get-go So uh, thank you very much for the wonderful advice. And uh, this will be the end of our discussion. Thank you so much for joining on Tech Expresso today and sharing your insights on scaling companies and applying blockchain in real world industries. It was truly an honor to have you on Tech Expresso. Thank you. Thank you so much, Veer. It was truly a pleasure and, uh, you know, and, and I loved having a conversation with you. And like I said, I've been a follower of Tech Expresso and you're doing a fabulous job. Continue to, you know, keep up the good work and continue to do the good work. Thank you.